Well, dear students, in last video I explained you how the energy value of electrons in autonomous objects have modified because the interaction of electrons of one atom with others and uh, then uh, formation of energy band and I explained the meaning of energy band. Uh, there is a range of energy value in which all positive energies are supposed to be uh, distributed and we can say that energy there is uh, continuously distributed. Okay, now I told that a large number of energy levels are created and there is no gap and that distribution is called energy band and oh, it is not possible always that all uh, energy levels are occupied by electron means the electron may uh, be there of all those energy may not be. Now I take it further. Quantum mechanically, quantum mechanically, quantum mechanics is that mechanics in which uh, energy uh, or light term form of a photon and energy of photon equal to h nu and every photon has a discrete value of energy so quantum mechanically uh, it has been proved that some energy band some energy bands can be occupied by electrons. Means in energy band, energy values are there and electron can possess those values present in band. These bands These bands are called allowed energy band. Energy bands. <laughs> there are there are some. energy bands which cannot be occupied by electrons. What it means that in that range of by energy band is a range of energy values so uh, uh, any energy value cannot be occupied by electron means electron of that much energy inside solid cannot be found these energy bands these energy bands are called Forbidden, forbidden energy band. The allowed energy band means the energy values of that band can be possessed by some electrons. Forbidden band means energy values of that range cannot be possessed by electron means electron of that much energy 
may not be found in side the electron. So I have told you this around the band and whole energy band. This this fact has been proved by quantum mechanics. Here we can't prove that because uh, it needs a lot of knowledge of quantum mechanics, but we have to accept it. Okay, there are some energy bands which can be allowed, which are allowed, means electron can take the energy uh, uh, of uh, those bands. And the allowed energy band may be completely filled or partially filled. The allowed energy bands may be completely occupied by may be completely 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 or partially 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 occupied by electrons means some energy layer may be is still not occupied means electron of those energy may not be there in every energy band lower energy states are filled first so upper energy band may be uh, energy level may be unoccupied means electron of those energy may, may not be there now uh, our aim is only here to differentiate between metal school conductor and semiconductor on the range of energy bands. Further, <coughs> the uppermost, the uppermost allowed energy band. By energy band, upper most means lower energy levels in one band and high energy in other band. The upper most allowed energy band is called conduction band. Conduction band. From here we start something new. Why? Lower in a, a lower allowed lower allowed sorry while energy band while energy band below uppermost. energy band means conduction band negative below conduction band why energy band below is called valence band The conduction band the conduction band may be partially partially occupied. by electrons or may be completely empty
but remember that uh, conduct, conduction band is allowed energy band. The merit conduction band is allowed energy band. <coughs> electron can take, but suppose anyhow electrons are not available to possess that energy, so that will be completely empty. While sorry, while the valence band is completely occupied by electrons in normal conditions. Generally, in the classroom, teacher gives the lecture and does not dictate the facts. So, students are unable to write themselves. So, I am writing here. Please uh, make note of these facts. Hmm. Uh, this is a very important topic because it will help you to understand uh, the action of semiconducting devices. Uh, now, here one thing very important, the valence band, sorry, the conduction band, the conduction band and valence band in solids may overlap each other or may be separated from each other Provisor by a forbidden, forbidden energy band. The width of the width of forbidden energy band. The width of forbidden, forbidden which is not allowed band depends on the nature of material. So this was something about energy band <coughs> in solids. Some energy bands are allowed, some are not allowed. The, mm, the upper most allowed energy band called uh, conduction band Y. Uh, the energy band lower than conduction band, allowed energy band. Below conduction band is called valence band. And these bands may be separated from each other by small gap or large gap depending upon the nature. Now on the basis of these bands, I will explain here you uh, <coughs> or I will differentiate between good conductor, insulator and semiconductor. So the first I tell here metals. Metals or Good conductor, good conductors of electricity, 
Actually, uh, our general talk sometimes confuses us. Once I ask, can define good conductors and vendor bad conductor of electricity in a class in Hartnelli exam? So we generally speak when in our supply current goes off, we say light has gone. Or when it is on, we say light has come. So child understand that light means electricity. So that's why I am saying it in here, good conductor of electricity. Metals generally are good conductor. Uh, in photoelectric effect, I told you that metals have free electrons. So free electrons means they, they can move freely inside. And when they move freely inside, uh, and we give energy to them, they can accept the energy. So which energy values are accepted? Here we will understand. In metals, the conduction band Conduction band. Conduction band. And valence band. This is your valence band. Overlap is there. Actually, in exam, how to so because we have to show some inner level which have been occupied here. So you may use blue sketch pen so that you may draw these boundary lines and to differentiate. These are the boundary values of energy levels in conduction band and this is the boundary uh, energy level of valence band. The valence band I just I told you is completely occupied by electron. So we can say here that okay, these lines are there. If we draw these lines, means these energy levels are occupied by electrons. In our MCRD book, actually uh, the allowed bands have been represented by blue ink in the band. So this is the uppermost, uppermost. Uh, occupied occupied energy level energy level in conduction band which is also the foremost energy level of conduction band so we have to differentiate between this you can show by blue ink the blue sketch pen and these lines can be drawn by pencil, carbon pencil, not by use your uh, geometry box in class in exam. The diagram then you ask in the exam. Okay, draw the energy band diagram of metals, insulator, and, and mark the energy there. So conduction band and valence band overlap is there. Some energy level are common to a conduction band as well as valence band. And uh, <coughs> all energy values in conduction band are occupied by electron and these energy levels are unoccupied. I have not drawn a line here. There are energy values which can be occupied by electron, but electrons are not present there. So it remains empty. So we can write here in metals. In metals, conduction band, conduction band and valence band. Overlap is a Some 
energy levels. Ah, common to the two bands valent band is completely occupied completely occupied by the tones while conduction band is partially occupied I have told that this range of band is of certain electron volt partially occupied by electrons some the highest energy level sorry the highest occupied energy level in conduction band is called Fermi energy level Once this was asked in board exam, what is Fermi energy level? Now, then, then how? What are your aim? We want to tell the, the matters conduct electricity. How? When we apply electric field across the conductor, suppose the conductor here, we apply electric field. So, electric field grid electrons. And electron gain energy. Electron gain those energy which are allowed only. This is a quantum mechanics treatment that, that, that not all possible value of energy cannot be occupied. Some energy levels are unoccupied here. So when we apply electric field, electrons present in lower energy levels uh, can be can take those energy and can go to higher energy state. And hence conduction is possible. So when we apply when we apply electric field across across the metallic conductor electrons take energy which is of the order of 0.04 electron volt and can go to higher energy level because energy level here unoccupied energy are allowed energy levels. Electron can take. If every energy is occupied, then electron will not take energy. 
जस्ट आई टोल्ड यू इन बोथ थ्योरी के इन ग्राउंड स्टेट एनर्जी ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन इन हाइड्रोजन एटम इज माइनस थर्टीन पॉइंट सिक्स एंड देन माइनस थ्री पॉइंट फोर तो टू गो फ्रॉम दिस लेवल टू दिस इलेक्ट्रॉन बी टेन पॉइंट टू इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट टेन पॉइंट टू इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट एनर्जी इज गिवन इन टू इलेक्ट्रॉन देन इट विल ओनली गो If you give t- uh, only ten electron volts, it will not go. The same way here, these energy bands are <coughs> are uh, allowed but not occupied. So there is a probability, there is a freedom that electron in lower band, lower end layer can uh, accept energy from electric field and go to higher state and conduction is possible. Can go higher than the Davis and hence uh, conduction is possible in metals. My aim is this: how conduction takes place. I think quantum mechanics bends the. Uh, some energy value which cannot be taken by electron. Now why electron take only this much energy? But they are big in number. When we apply electric field, their mean free path is very small, and uh, uh, they lose the uh, energy due to collision with each other or with the uh, <coughs> positive ions present in metal. I hope you have got my point. Now in next video I will explain you. the conductivity of bad conductor and semiconductor actually long discussion is required here <coughs> so some video may go long here please take care and uh, when you if you read and like so please like the video share the video among your friend and ask your friend to share my to uh, subscribe my channel thank you